Lundy, you're really a piece of work, ain't you? You sure are. You're a real piece of work. You know, um, when it comes down to reality, when Heather and I got together and we were seeing each other, Heather tried to get you to meet me. You absolutely refused to meet me. You even went as far as going to the sheriff's department over me taking your daughter who was an adult and tried to get them to do something about it that they couldn't do anything about because it was perfectly legal. So then you went to the extremes of trying to get an attorney to go after parental custody over your daughter so you could destroy her life and have total control over her. That is the reason your daughter left her house the way she left her house. Then you still tried to pursue the parental custody by going to your daughter's job, lying to her boss, and trying to get her boss to convince her that what she was signing was for her job, when in reality it was so that you could pull school records and show that your daughter had a disability to use it to get parental custody to yank her back home. So we got married, which put a stop to you. Then you were extremely irate because you lost out on something you started, all because you need to have control and power over other people. Now, I understand it's your child, but your child grew up a long time ago. But you don't want to accept the fact your child grew up. You still want to be the controller. So now we'll go forward. You been attacking me behind my back ever since. Ever since. When you started hurling your insults at me and attacking me on my Facebook wall, I merely told you to leave me alone. To leave me alone. You wouldn't. So then I told you I was going to make a video for you if you didn't leave me alone. You didn't listen. You still kept attacking me. So I made a video for you. Then you became irate, irate because I told the truth on that video that you still deny, even though you know in your heart I'm telling the truth. Okay? When your daughter deceived me when it came to her student loans into believing that you were the one that went to school and used her name and it was coming back on her to pay it off, the student loan off, which would be identity theft, whether it's your child or not, you wouldn't have a right to do that. I did what anybody would do, reported to the police department. Heather went down and reported to the police department that she did not go to this school. These loans ate from her and she suspected it was her mother, which is what she told me. Well, the investigation came out that it was Heather. Heather was scared that something to do with the student loans that I might leave her. Okay, Heather's a little bit slow. She didn't understand this. The detective was correct on his investigation. But it had nothing to do with me. That was going taking her to the police station to make that report is what somebody would do if their identity had been stolen and somebody used somebody else's information to go to an online school and now was in debt and it wasn't that person who had done it. That would be identity theft. Okay, so you would make a report to the police station, perfectly normal thing to do. But the investigation came back that Heather had actually was the one that went to the online schooling, and that was legitly hers. Well, when the cop had Heather down at the police station, the detective, and Heather owned up to it, you were also there and so was I. When he called us back into that room that day, you were determined to blame everything on me. The detective saw what the truth was, and he scolded your ass more than once to shut you down. The detective saw the truth. I knew the truth. The detective knew I did what should be done because I was under the belief of what I was told, which is what you do if somebody stole your identity. You didn't want to accept that. You wanted to be, it was all my fault, my fault, my fault. So the cop detective got mad at you. He scolded you more than once. Now, we go another year or two down the road. 
you done all this stuff on Facebook. I made the video to you. I told the truth. I never lied. I don't come up online and make videos and lie. Okay? So all that's done past that. That's over with, right? I leave you alone. You did call the cop, though, and the sheriff's department tried to get a restraining order on me for being the villain when in reality you were the villain, not me. I was the victim. But just like our twisted society, you want to be the perpetrator and the victim. And you want to take the victim you created and make them into the perpetrator, re-victimize them. This is what you attempted to do. Okay? Now recently I made another video at you because it was moving. But boy, I'm telling you, Linda, you really take the cake. Okay? You really take the cake on this one. So let's just get right down to the nasty details here. Okay, this is what you want to do, and this is the way you want to play. Then let's play, Linda, okay? Since you want to play. Let's go ahead and play. The difference between your playing and my playing is I'm going to be honest. I'm not going to lie and manipulate anything. Okay? So here we are. Heather has a sister. Her sister's underage, so therefore I'm not going to say the name. Okay? Heather loves her sister. Okay, now it appears that her sister now feels and believes that Heather has backstabbed her. That's right. Her sister believes that Heather has backstabbed her. Now, how did Heather backstab her? Let's examine this. Heather is the backstabber to her sister because she found somebody she wanted to be with and went back and went was an adult who grew up, was well over age, and went to be with this person. Yeah, there's a lot of years between Heather and her sister. No lie. There's a lot of years there. And even though Heather loves her sister, Heather went on with her life. Now, because we're moving, this mother never asked for reason we were moving. She just started reaching up her anal, making up excuses, and lying. So just like with the wedding that I suddenly became uninvited to, thanks to this meddling mother, the mother has now convinced Heather's sister that Heather has backstabbed her sister. You know what this is about, right? This is about pitting child against child by the mother to cause unwarranted stress on her daughter to play guilt trip on her daughter so that Heather would leave me and go back to her mother's house so that Heather would move that's what this is really about now without ever asking why I was moving there was more than one reason if she had asked she would have found out there was more than one reason. One reason, the biggest reason, was my health and the fact that my son, just like Heather, do not have a driver's license. And where we live, if they don't have transportation to work, they lose their jobs. Now, my son has had an issue his whole life with falling asleep anytime he gets in a moving vehicle. So he's paranoid about trying to get a license for the fact he don't want to fall asleep behind the wheel. I had to respect him for that. Okay, so therefore, what I attempted to do was to move to the town that he worked in, knowing that Heather could probably even get a job up in that town. At least then I pass away. Both of them are in the same town they have their jobs and they can get back and forth to work. That's the first reason. Second reason is I live in a mobile home that's over 50 years old. It's going to cost me probably thirty to forty thousand dollars in repairs to put that together that I don't have. It's falling down over my head, so I need to get the hell out of here. Okay, so I'm getting out of it. I was going to get out of it and go up to where my son works, but the real estate, as I found out when I started digging into it, is so overinflated in this state because of greed, that's right, because of greed, 
that it would be just total waste of time. My son was making almost 15 bucks an hour. He was working 10 hour days. His whole paycheck for $15 an hour, 10 hour days, would go to some landlord. That's how high the realty is. Okay, which is absolutely, there's just no excuse for it. Okay, so I'm looking back to my hometown where realty there is much more affordable. That's right. Where you can afford to live. Up here, you better have more than one person in your house or a bunch of good incomes in order to even afford to live in this state. Not everybody's made out of money. So on the best interest of knowing where I'm living is going to cost way too much to fix up, not even worth it, okay? And the price of real estate here is going to make it harder than hell to even move, okay? And even if we did move, we could make it until the first time I pass away. Then he's trying to find a roommate and you, somebody you don't know to pay part of the bills. Who are you going to trust somebody you don't know? And I don't think so. So the choice became go back to my hometown where it really is cheaper and he could get a job and at least be able to afford to live. Something happens to me. There's a bus system. There's a way to get back and forth to work. They're not driving out of town. Where I live now, he's driving out of town, two towns down, about 19 miles one way to get to work. So it's not feasible for us to stay in this location. And, as, and you know, and with the cost of fixing this place, it's not worth it. So I took the best options. Abiding the situation was the reality is as high as it is, and that's just outright to the roof, just wrong. But it's nothing but greed. That's all it is. I recognize it for what it is. It's just filthy ass greed. People not caring about other people and all about themselves and their greed for more and more and more for themselves. That's all it's about. That's the world we live in. That's the real reason we were moving. That is the reason we're moving. Okay, but do you think that Heather's mother would think of any of this? No. Do you think she would think to take the time to ask? No. She's not going to ask. She's just going to make her assumptions. So meanwhile, just like with the aunt, the soon-to-be aunt, that would now be an aunt by marriage, who had invited myself and her to the wedding, who uninvited me after saying, now that she knows about how I am. So let's see, this is somebody who don't know the first thing about me that knows how I am, that's never talked to me, been around me, and don't even know me. So how would she know how I am? Oh, that's right. Heather's mother. The liar. The manipulator. That's right. So what did she do? Because Heather's leaving the state. She has made sure to badmouth me in every way possible and badmouth her own daughter. She was not only will, not willing to come out of her way to come to where Heather lives to pick her up to take her to the wedding because that was too much of an inconvenience for her. Okay? When she's the one that caused me to be uninvited to begin with, but now she's going to go to the extremes of turning Heather's young sister against Heather so that she could hopefully play a guilt trip on Heather to force Heather to leave me to come back to her house. That's all this is about. It's about control. And she has went to every extreme. She has lied and manipulated. She has convinced this young girl, okay, that people don't grow up and move out of their house. People don't get husbands or wives in their lives and move on with their life because that would be shitting on their family. That would be dumping on their family. That everybody that ever grew up in society always stayed with their families and never got with anybody. I don't know what planet she lives on, but it's sure, sure not reality. It's called somebody who's a control freak that don't want to accept the fact your child grew up. 
okay, so now, and wants to control her life. She has went to the dirtiest extremes of all, and she has convinced this young girl, Heather's sister, that Heather has backstabbed her. Because Heather is going to now move out of state. First off, Heather left the house. Got somebody in her life and went on with her life. That means Heather dumped her family. Threw them away. Now anybody with any common sense knows that's not true at all. Okay. Now here's Heather's sister telling Heather that she has backstabbed her because she's moving. Wrong. Plain, sick, wrong. You want to know what the real truth is, Linda? The only backstabber is you, that of yourself. You are backstabbing Heather and backstabbing her sister. I will not say the name because she's underage. You have actually stabbed your own children in the back and pitted them against each other for your own selfish want. Now, here you are causing more hurt on your children for your own selfish want. You are one piece of shit. Man, you just take it to the extremes, don't you, Linda? You just won't quit lying and manipulating and twisting and lying and lying and manipulating and twisting to get your want. So now let's bring something else up that I wasn't even going to bring up, but I will now. See, Heather's mother is married. And I'm not, once again, I'm going to say no names. No punts included here, okay? The person that she's married to, well, was doing inappropriate things to Heather's sister. They have been prosecuted for it. That situation is totally over. But during that situation, when Heather's sister came forward and told the mother what was going on, the mother, rather than call the police, took the victim, her sister, and removed her from her own bedroom and her own home and made her stay at her grandma's house so that she could keep her husband in his house with her. And never reported it to the police. So then a sister tells the counselor at school what's going on at home with her stepdad. And now the police are involved. He goes to jail. Now because he goes to jail, the sister's allowed to go home. So when Heather's sister was being victimized by this guy, Linda stood up for the perpetrator and threw her own daughter under the bus in front of the train. Now Linda has brainwashed her daughter into believing that Heather has backstabbed her because she's doing what normal adults are doing, went on with her life. You know, Linda, if you lose custody of, uh, of your of your daughter. If you lose custody of your daughter, it's because that's exactly what should happen to you. Though I don't wish that upon her, because I wouldn't want to see her put in group homes. I wouldn't want to see her in foster care, where she may be further a victim by somebody else. So I would never wish that upon her. But you pity her against her sister through your manipulation and brainwashing and lies. I'm sorry, but that's abuse within itself. Just like when your daughter counted on you to be there for her, you threw her out of her own house and stood by the first person who was victimizing your daughter. Now to control your other daughter, to prevent her from having a life, you're going to go to the lowest extremes of love. So now Heather has to be hurt 
by her sister because her sister feels that she has backstabbed her. There's no backstabbing going on here at all. This is not Heather's fault. This is 100% Linda. Stabbing her own children in the back and pitting them against each other for her own selfish want. You're one vile, disgusting, low-life person, Linda. I think you need to go see medical attention, mental medical attention, and get your shit in order. Because you're the villain, the perpetrator, and now you're victimizing your children for your own selfish want again. I don't like doing videos like this. I really don't. But I also hate the hell out of what I'm seeing going on. I hate it so bad that I'm going to say something. And if you don't approve of what I'm doing, I don't care. Let the truth be truth and let the truth be told. You don't like it? Oh well. You know, I've been the villain ever since I made that video when I was never the villain. Never. I've never attacked you. I've never showed up at your house. I've never called your names. I've never gone on your Facebook page and left inappropriate posts calling your names and accusing you of shit ever. I leave you alone. But you just can't leave me alone. You keep using your daughter's cell phone and calling her and sending her texts on Facebook, attacking me, attacking me to your daughter who's with me. And now because of what the situation is that's caused it to move, they're going to go to these extremes and you have pitted her daughter against her own sister. All for your own selfish wants. You are one low life piece of shit. Excuse my language, but that's what you are. By rights, you should lose the daughter you have. But I'm not going to wish that upon you. Because I don't want your daughter put in another situation where she could very clearly be a victim by somebody else. You know, but you definitely need help. There's no doubt about it. You need help. I feel sorry for Heather. And I feel sorry for Heather's sister. I really do. I feel so sorry for him. There's nothing I can do for him. But I'm not going to just sit back and not say nothing. Now that Heather's sister has verbally told Heather that she has backstabbed her just because of the mother. So tell me anywhere in the world where when your children grow up, they didn't eventually move out of their home. Where they eventually, if they met somebody, didn't go off and have their own life. And then have children so that their parents could be grandma and grandpa. If we went with the philosophy of Linda, there'd be no such thing as a grandma or a grandpa. No, there wouldn't be. And children would never leave their home. They would grow up and die and have to only be able to leave their home or anything when their parents was dead. Because the parent would, what, not be willing to let go of their children when they grow up? This is sick. It's right out wrong. And so, yeah, I said something about it. If you don't like what I said, I don't care. You're the one going to the extreme. You're the one that has now turned Heather's sister against her. And you know damn well you are. Just like it was you and your other sister who manipulated the aunt by marriage into believing. See, that's why I said somebody that don't even know me said, now that I know how you are, you're not invited. Now that you know how I are. You only met me one time. You only talked to me one time when you invited me in heaven. You haven't seen me since. You don't even know me. See, what does that tell you? It tells you all you need to know. 
the mother, Glenda, is a real piece of work, isn't she? A real piece of work. 